Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Relapse Tackle. In this video, we're going to be pouring up some freestyle jigs using a mold that I modified and milled this out at a mag magnetic strip. Um, this helps hold the hooks and the bait keepers firmly in place. Um, occasionally, if you open it, um, some stuff does move, but not very often. Um, so, I was going to edit out some of the stuff in the video that I messed up, but I figured I'd rather just shoot it raw, let you guys see that uh, mistakes happen, and uh, don't worry about it. Uh, wear leather gloves, though. This is one of the mistakes right there. I just overshot into the second cavity from the first one because it's such a small amount of lead that goes into that first one. Um, so, got to be careful. Shoot a little slower. Um, don't lift up on the rod for quite so long. So it didn't quite fill the the whole thing. Sometimes overshooting it, um, they'll fill up just fine too. But in this case, it didn't. So I'm going to reuse the hook and the bait keeper. Easy enough. Just place it back into its spot and move along. So I usually wait to cut the um, sprues off. But here I'm just going to clip this off because it's a lot of lead and I want to keep these different sizes separated. So I'm using a muffin tin. This helps keep things a little more organized. Because I can put each size in its own little spot. And then I'll go back, like I said, later on and cut these sprues off after the lead is cool down and fully set so if you try to clip them off right away sometimes the lead can be kind of mushy and you can leave kind of divots and stuff in the lead and uh, doesn't look very good with these being round a round head um, I try to clip them at a little bit of an angle so that it keeps a rounded head instead of a flat spot if you're using a flush cutter um, you can use, you can uh, create a pretty good flat spot on the nose because they're flat and not rounded like the head. So I'm using three different size hooks. I'll show in the video what hooks I'm using. The ones right now that I'm putting in are the uh, bait keeper hooks from Michael Burry. Um, on the custom net hook page. There you go. The size 4 must add sickle hooks. They're black nickel finish. Um, these owner, number 1 owner, they're also black nickel finish. I really like the black nickel finish. I do not like that red. You know, a lot of people swear by the red hooks, but I don't like them. And then this is the WB400 and here is the bait keeper hook so I put the mold on top to preheat those hooks and stuff a little bit so that I get better pours. Sometimes the jigs will pour without um, letting the mold heat up. Sometimes they pour fine cold. I just prefer to let it heat up a little bit just so I can make sure that I have the best chance possible at getting a good pour every time. Once the mold gets really hot though it doesn't take much at all for the hooks and everything to get up to temp especially when they're a smaller hook and small bait keeper and stuff um, once you get into the bigger hooks and stuff that take more heat you know just let them sit for a little bit longer so that you can make a good solid pour every time so um, I'm also using a modified Lee pot. 
it's a 10 pound um, 120 volt lead pot that I made taller so that I could pour bottom bouncers and stuff with it a little easier um, and I always use a cast iron pan below it to catch any drips and stuff it was getting a few drips but not terrible um, sometimes they they can leak like crazy it just takes a little bit of work getting the temp set right and um, sometimes moving the rod turning it with a standard screwdriver to get the rod kind of set better and then here I'm going to show how I clip the sprue take small cuts so I'm just going to cut just a little bit and it'll kind of fold away from it and there you go so I kept a round nose on it it's not flat and then I'm just going to clean up the edge just a little bit with these flush cutters to scrape it <laughs> so don't use a belt sand or anything like that you can make a lot of lead particulates fly around and you can ingest them limit your exposure to lead always wear your gloves if it spills over especially on that last one closest to the handles it uh, oh watch out for the spider um, apparently I have a spider living in my room I didn't realize that he was going across the screen there um, but with the gloves the closest one to the handle is really easy to overspill and it'll land right in your hand and could burn you like crazy so even a thin pair of leather gloves get a little bit better chances of not getting injured so I highly recommend wearing some type of glove at least then you can pull them off quick and hopefully not get burnt I like using a thin pair though because they get a little bit better dexterity But even with the thin ones on, I can't place the hooks and keepers and stuff in there without taking them off. So occasionally I forget to put them back on and then I start pouring. So kind of fighting a cold right now. So sorry if I sound a little different, a little stuffed up and not really feeling the greatest. But uh, I videoed, or I, sorry, I recorded this video a few days ago and um, just decided to do a voiceover on it real quick so that I could get it out there so that people can see it so hopefully it's not terrible I messed up there again it overshot So those WB400 bait keepers, they have uh, like a 90 degree bend that goes up in the head of the lead. And then you have um, kind of like a, I'd say a 45 degree angle. That's what actually holds the soft plastics. Um, and you can pour these without a bait keeper in them. Just as easy if you wanted to make some... Uh, live bait hooks or um, if you're gonna do some fly tying so you can just pour without the bait keeper in them and then just clip off that little bit of lead that comes out where the bait keeper is supposed to be So, if you haven't already, please subscribe, share the video with your friends, um, comment on the video if you have any questions or concerns or any ideas. 
be sure to drop them drop them in the comments i would love to hear from you guys So I'm, like I said, I'm keeping the lee pot at four for heat, and I'm I got the the mold probably about an inch away from the spout when I'm pouring, so the spout is not up inside um, the gate. I try not to get it stuck in the gate because um, I know a lot of people are like put it right in the put the gate right in there, you know and. I think a lot of times doing that, though, you can get a lot of, um, like, stuff just up inside there, and then it starts dripping more. It doesn't keep the, um, the spout clear. That's one of the main reasons why a lot of people have issues with their lee pots dripping like crazy is because they, you know, put the spout right in the gate. And then they got garbage just stuck inside there all the time. Plus, you want to keep your leaf pot about half full. Never fill it up all the way. You can um, make it... Uh, so when you fill it up all the way, the, the lead is heavier than the, the um, pin. It'll start actually making the pin float up and then leak. 